In this video, I'm going to help you understand how to create dashboards using Zenworks Reporting 621. This is the version of Zenworks Reporting that's going to be available shortly after Zenworks 2017. And it has some really great enhancements around dashboarding. So the use case here is you want to create a dashboard that can be used to provide status about some or all of the endpoint management portfolio in your environment. One of the really great things about 621 is you now have the ability to do pass data from one filter to another filter in the dashboard or to do hyperlinking between different reports. What's nice about that now is you could actually mix and match data from different domains that maybe information out of Service Desk and information out of Zenworks. And as long as there's common data between the two, you can actually filter and pass data to be able to get that dashboard to have much more interactivity. So the requirements here are you have to have Zenworks reporting installed and it has to be 621 version for what you're going to see. You have to have Zenworks reporting able to connect to the database server or servers hosting the endpoint management data you want to report on. The reporting domain or domains for the endpoint management products you wish to report on has to be imported. You're a member of a group that provides access to the reporting server and reports have been created. And this is actually one that's kind of new you no longer have to create those reports prior to doing your dashboard. If those reports exist, then you can use them, whether they were created through ad hoc and then you created a report, or they were created through Jaspersoft Studio, you can still drag those onto the canvas. But starting with this release, you actually now have the ability to create dashlets, which are basically reports built right in the dashboard. So you don't necessarily have to have built those reports prior. So to create a dashboard, you start the dashboard designer. You can set your title, you can customize the layout. What's really nice too about the dashboard designer now is as you drag content in, it automatically re resizes the different content to try to make room. You can also add images and text to your, to your dashboard. That way when you put it up on a big screen, you can have the company logo, company name, those kinds of things. You'll then drag in existing reports or you'll create new ad hoc dashlets on the canvas. Once you've got all of the reports there, you can then start to wire up any drill downs or hyperlinks that you wanna have between the different aspects of the dashboard. You could add any report controls that you want. So if you've got filters you want to add, you could do that. And when you're done, you test the dashboard and if everything is good, you go ahead and publish it out. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that's done. So what I have here is the Zenworks Reporting 621 console. You can tell it's new because you've got the new blue branding up at the top there. And we're going to be creating dashboards. Now the 561 dashboard designer was kind of limited. Everything you were gonna do on that dashboard designer really had to be coming from the same domain. So that meant you could build like a microfocus desktop containers domain dashboard. You could build a service desk dashboard, but trying to tie data and really build a meaningful business dashboard that consumes all of the data from the various endpoint management products could be difficult. So the new dashboard designer is actually really powerful. Um, basically what you have here is two different ways to drag content on. The first way is from existing content. So if you've got existing content that came in from somewhere, you could drag it over here. So if you've already created a report, if you've got a graph or something you want to pull over, you can do that. You also have the ability to build in images. So for instance, I could pull an image over and I either can specify a web address to pull the image from, or in my case, it's already in the repository. And so I would specify the path there. In my case, I've actually done this on a different dashboard um, and I'll show you what that looks like. But you can drag the image over, you can drag text over, in my case, what I want to do is actually build some dashlets. And a dashlet is basically an ad hoc report, but it's only defined in the dashboard. So you don't have to create them beforehand. And you'll see how this works. I'm just going to do some very simple ones. Here's my service desk domain. Maybe I want to count some information around configuration, the configuration management database. And so I could quickly and easily build a report that say, tells me the breakdown in my system of all the different item types. So I've got item types here. Maybe I add that as a column. 
And then I come over here and I tell it I want to count the number of items. So that is a row. And we'll drill in to that. And you'll see all the different item types. If I want, that's probably a better way to look at it. So you can see I have a lot of Microsoft SQL databases. I have a lot of virtual machines. I've got some MicroFocus desktop containers apps, so on and so forth. So this will be items by type. And we'll save that. And this will be our MFSD items by type dashboard, dashlet. Once that's done, it goes right on to the dashboard. And you'll see that come in. And then if I wanted to drag something else in, Let's say now I want to grab a cross tab. I can grab that in and you can see it trying to fit the data on there. And so again, I might grab some more information about the MicroFocus service desk. This time though, maybe I'm going to create a cross tab and it's all about the request data. And so basically I want to be able to know how many of the different kinds of incidents I have in my environment. So for instance here, I'll come in and say I've got request type and I want to count the number of requests and so you'll see I've got one change request, 11 incidents, four service requests. I could flip those around. Now it looks that way. Might be a little better on my dashboard. And it's possible maybe I want to be able to filter that by a particular type. So I could go ahead and add that item type name as a filter and say it equals or is one of any of these number of item types. So we'll go ahead and save this. Uh, this will be requests by item type. We'll save that. And now we'll get a cross tab out here on our chart. And so you can then very easily build in some interactivity. So we had a couple things. Over here we have the item type name. Over here we had a filter on item type and we've got the change incident request, etc. So one of the things you can do here is right click, go to hyperlinks and enable chart hyperlinking and tell it to update the dashboard. And so basically what you can then do is define a filter that says, when I click one of these bars on the left chart, I want you to pass that to the bar on the right hand side or the chart on the right hand side and pass that as the item type name so that it filters down on that chart. So if I put this in preview mode now, so that it's actually as the end user would use it, you can see I've got these different requests here. If I then come in and drill in on say MicroFocus desktop container applications, then over here on the right hand side, that cross tab should get updated and you'll see I have two incidents and three service requests for items of that type. So that's a really simple dashboard. It illustrates a couple key things you could do. Dashlets, so you don't have to create the reports ahead of time. They're just defined within the dashboard itself and the interactivity of being able to click here and update the data here. Now I'm gonna to switch to a slightly more interesting dashboard that I've built. So I'm gonna go home and there's this ZenGuru endpoint dashboard that I've built. I'm gonna open that in the designer. And this has three different reports built into it and it's got some filtering built into it. So the one on the left here shows me how many times users have been launching virtual applications and the colors of the lines represent the application that's being launched. Over here on the top right, I have information coming in from service desks. So this is information about service requests. Remember there were five of them that have been opened about MicroFocus desktop container applications. And then the bottom one is a chart that gives me the details on each one of those.
up here, I have this filter that basically says, I want to see all of the data within that came in 90 days or newer. And so if I want to change that, I could say I only want to see the last 30 days or the last 120 days or after a specific date in time. You see I've brought my logo in here. Again, this came out of the repository. So if you look at the details, it's the repo colon and then the path from the repository. You can see that path in the repository on any object in the repository uh, by going and finding that object that you want. In my case, that image is over here under images. You can right click and say properties and it will go ahead and tell you here's the path. And so when you add the image, you just add repo colon and then the path. Then I've got my title for my dashboard here. I've got my filter. If you don't want this filter to show up actually on the dashboard itself, you also have the option to say show it as a pop-up, in which case there will be this little filter icon that pops up instead of it being shown there. That can be really useful if you've got a lot of filters and you don't want the user having to fill all that out. Maybe you want it to come up by default with a set of filters and then if they want to change it, they can. And that way you're not taking up a whole bunch of the real estate with the filter box. Now we can go ahead and test this out. Uh, I've actually wired up this here so you can see when I click on the left, I'm clicking the display name of the application. So I'm going to say, for instance, Firefox is the app. And when I pass that off to these two, I'm going to pass the name, the display name data off to a field called field value in the service desk domain. Same thing on the filter group. If I change the days, say from days minus 90 to days minus 60, I'm going to pass that to all three of these reports, but as a different value. So you can see for service desk, I'm going to pass in the data report it is after. For microfocus desktop containers, I'm going to pass in session start time is after. But that should then make sure all of those are filtered down so you're only seeing data within the last X number of days. So now you're ready to test it out. You can click here. There's our report, our dashboard. If the user was to come in here and click the red line, now we're looking at just the Firefox data. And so you can see I get updated information on these other two. These are the incidents that have been opened for Firefox. I've got one that is a setup or installation issue. I've got two that are general issues. If I want to know more about that, I've got the details down here that I can look at it. If I want to look at something else, I can click 7-zip, and these two will re-update themselves so that we're looking at 7-zip. You also have the ability to expand out as a user. So let's say this had a lot of data in it, and I wanted to look at it in more detail. I can click here. It'll bring that report up full screen. I can click back down here and get rid of that. I can change my filtering. So let's say I only want to see what's happened in the last 60 days. Hit apply. And all of the graphs get updated with the data in the last 60 days. Once you've got this the way that you want it, now you're ready to share it with the user. So you save this report. Go ahead and save the dashboard first. And then typically when you push this to the user, you probably don't want them to see this Zenworks reporting bar up here because you don't necessarily want them creating reports or anything like that. So you can actually send it out with this decorate equals no on the end of it. That's what you go ahead and send out to the user. And when they get that, what they'll actually see, and actually I forgot I was on the preview, so let's go back and look at what the actual user experience would be. So we'll run that. Now we're on the actual user URL and we can add the decorate equals no. And you'll see what the end user would get when you sent them this URL is basically that same page but without the blue on the top with all those options. So they would just get the dashboard here and they'd have the option to 
click and toggle the group pop-ups. They'd have the option to export the dashboard into an HTML file or a PDF file, whatever it is they may want to export it to. And now you've got the different data. So you could throw this up on a big screen monitor, make it full screen, you know, get rid of the top bar on the browser, and it's going to end up looking something like this to the end user. So what you've seen here is the ability to create really complex dashboards with built-in interactivity that you can cross the different domain boundaries with. If I had bundles, for instance, that were used to launch MicroFocus desktop container apps, I might bring bundle information into this dashboard so that you can see across the Zenworks service desk and MicroFocus desktop containers environments, all of the data about a particular application. I hope you found this useful, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank <music> you.